Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Inside the Birds Fantasy Football Show with Andrew DeCecco. I'm Jeff Mosher from Inside the Birds. And of course, joining me as he does every week is InsideTheBirds.com's Andrew DeCecco, our resident fantasy football expert. Andrew, we are sort of halfway through the season, at least the NFL season. There's no true yeah. halfway mark anymore, but it's been a pretty interesting first eight weeks of the season. I want to start off by asking you, when you look at like all the point scorers in fantasy football, is there a guy that kind of stands out as the first half MVP or, or the guy who scored so many points that it was hard to see that coming into the year? Well, I would say the, the first half MVP to me would have to be someone like an Austin Eckler, who's just very consistent, especially when you're looking at a lot of the running backs, Jeff, that haven't been really consistent throughout the year. I think when you look at what he's able to do, especially in that offense, passing and and in the running game, you have to you have to like what you see with him. Other than that, there hasn't been a whole lot of people that have really stood out recently. Uh, a Mike guy like a Michael Pittman has really come on as Carson Wentz's go to guy as someone that I didn't really necessarily see emerging as quickly as he has. Uh, so, I mean, there there's there, there's some guys, but it hasn't been as, as you know, uh, concrete as recent years. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, one of my votes would maybe go to also Cooper Cup to almost have a thousand yards and 10 touchdowns already is not something. Uh, Derek, and obviously Derek, Derek Henry too. Oh yeah. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. All right. Well, you know, owners are still going through it everybody's trying to make a playoff push here over the next few weeks. And of course there's still bye weeks going on. So why don't we go through some of our waiver claims, some of the waiver claims that you think sure. owners need to pounce on this week. Well, first we got to look at 36 year old Adrian Peterson. Unfortunately, Derek Henry, he was on another tear and uh, this is going to be out for eight to 10 weeks with the injury, with the foot injury. So you have to look at AP as just from a volume standpoint, he fits with that offense likes to do that physical uh, downhill mentality. Also look at Jeremy McNichols, the backup to Derek Henry, who get this, Jeff, he always carried the ball seven times all year. And that's Life when you're backing up Derrick Henry, you don't see a whole lot of action. I like him as a PPR option. He's had 27 targets this year. I think that he can be a, good, a decent flex play week to week. Uh, Boston Scott and Jordan Howard, two guys that, you know, last week, everybody, there was much to do about Kenny Gainwell. Everybody rushed to the waiver wire to pick up Kenny Gainwell. Well, I went with Boston Scott, knowing that he, uh, the Eagles tend to go to him when there's injuries arise and things of that nature. He's also a goal line option. He's a pretty stout running back. So he's pretty well-rounded in that offense. And I think that they really like Kenny Gainwell as more of the pass receiving option. So, uh, and I think Jordan Howard is going to continue to hit, you know, I think he's going to be elevated this week, obviously, and they're going to have an opportunity to go against the Chargers, uh, a porous Chargers run defense. So those are guys that I like. Also, if you're looking at a quarterback, if you're in desperation and you're looking for uh, a quarterback, I would look at Justin Fields. He ran for 103 yards last week he threw for 175 one touchdown one interception and also keep an eye on the situation with Taysom Hill who has yet to clear concussion protocol but with Jameis Winston on the shelf for the season with a torn ACL and Trevor Simeon still there but you have to like the upside as the dual threat with uh, Taysom Hill so keep an eye on his uh, progress uh, throughout the week and, and the developments that uh, happen with the Saints. No doubt about it. that would be the second week in a row that you recommend a quarterback pickup. I know we were talking about Carson Wentz last week. And of course, nice job riding Boston Scott. And for two more weeks, that might be a good play as Miles Sanders is probably going to miss two more weeks and maybe even more. Why don't we talk about some must plays this weekend in fantasy football? Who do you have to start no matter what? For me, it's got to be Michael Carter, the running back for the Jets. 172 all-purpose yards. He was a guy that I sneakily picked up Right after the London game, they had a bye week and I grabbed them there and, um, you know, I saw the usage start to trend in the positive direction. So I kept them on my bench and I had a weird feeling. So I put them in last week against the Bengals and uh, it definitely paid off and helped me win my week. Uh, Miles Gaskin, I know you asked me about him before when you and I were co corresponding last week. He's someone that they're going against the Texans, so you have to like the game script there. He had 12 carries and uh, four pass targets, caught three of those. So I think that there's going to be a lot of opportunity for him there. 
Um, Jeremy McNichols is a player that I like in a PPR format. So you're going to want to check him out. Uh, Michael Pittman is a player that we talked about. He had 15 targets last week, Jeff. He caught 10 of them for 86 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, they're coming on a, on a short week. They had an overtime game, but I still like him. He's really emerging as Carson Wentz's go-to target. So plug him in your lineups if you have them. Absolutely. And we know Carson, uh, for all his flaws, likes to put the ball down the field. Michael Pittman has been the guy on the end of some of those long throws, no doubt about it. All right. As you look at the schedule and you see some of the players that the matchup just isn't right, who are you going to sit this weekend? Well, Adrian Peterson, first and foremost, obviously he's probably going to be the top waiver claim, but he's 36 years old. You don't know how he's going to be utilized and he's going against a Rams team. That's 23rd against running backs. They're very stout. So you have, you have to wait and see how he's going. I don't think he's just going to come in there and all of a sudden assume 20 carries a hundred yards, a touchdown, you know, like Derek Henry, I think he's going to sort of be a committee approach. So I'm kind of waiting to see how that plays out. Um, I'm also looking at, uh, I don't, don't want to play DJ Moore this week if I have him. If you have other options, plug him in. He hasn't scored since week four. They're going against the Patriots, who have a fairly decent defense, Jeff. And also, uh, Sam Darnold is a very uh, is going through some growing pains the last two weeks. So I wouldn't start him with any sort of confidence. I would hold him off. And uh, Devontae Smith. How could I forget Devontae Smith? Uh, Twelve targets over the past two weeks. Only seventy-six yards. No touchdowns. Just hasn't been there. He's it's drops and Jalen Hurts has missed him. He missed him on a corner route for a touch that for a would be touchdown in the second uh, second quarter last week. So they're just not on the same page. Very volatile passing attack right now in Philadelphia. So I wouldn't play Devontae Smith if you have other options. No, certainly it has not been a, a prolific passing attack for the last few weeks. So uh, sitting Devontae Smith may not sound fun for Eagles fans, but maybe better for their playoff push here in fantasy football. That's going to do it for Inside the Birds Fantasy Football Show with Andrew DeCecco. I'm Jeff Mosher. That's Andrew DeCecco. We'll do this again next week. Thanks, everybody, for watching.